Hey guys, and uh, yeah, welcome to my first proper video, I suppose, for um, for making a little bit of content about FFTCG. It's uh, it, it's very underrepresented, I think, um, in the TCG world, and uh, the game's probably not supported as well as we'd like it to be by you know by some of the LGSs and. And maybe Square Enix and Hobby Japan haven't promoted it um, as best as they could do, but the game is the game is a lot of fun, and um, and from my point of view, being a rather casual player and a bit of a collector, the um, the appeal to the game is is quite enthralling. Um, you know, just just because of the cards and and especially recently that how the values of the cards and you know the collectability of the card is becoming a thing now obviously pokemon magic uh, flesh and blood keyforge all this all these other games they've they've seen quite a a boost in their popularity definitely in the collectability side of it um and that's that's definitely rubbed off onto uh onto Final Fantasy uh, a lot more than probably what some people um, what, what some people think it, you know it's it's definitely being downplayed or not not intentionally I don't think but it's 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 definitely not being appreciated as much uh, as what it should be now obviously I have a, I have a few cards here um, it, it's no surprise to, to some people that I do collect this game quite heavily. I've, uh, you know, I've invested quite a bit of time and, and money and and whatnot into the game. I'm quite passionate about collecting it, um, and I've, you know, I've been doing so quite heavily for a little while now. But um, you know, like, okay, so the, Opus One here, yeah, the, you know, this is the first set, and obviously, you know, some of you may know that it had two sets. It had wave one and, and wave two there's actually a very small wave three printing but um it, it's kind of irrelevant for where we are now but um you know there's some there's some regular wave opus one these are wave two cards these are the second printing so these are much more abundant but you know there's some big characters you've got your cloud lightnings tifas and then obviously there's the there's a legend cloud hit over here and you know some of the values of these these are you know these are not cards that see play they uh they're no use to anyone really in a in a, in a competitive deck i mean clouds never see him playing golbez maybe t for is i don't know probably um but these cards are starting to command quite a decent value for for what they are uh and obviously it's because they're a character you know they're a big character in a in a big game uh, and a lot of people are dismissing the fact that Final Fantasy is such a huge IP that, you know, the following behind these characters here is, is much bigger than FFTCG. So you don't need to be an FFTCG player to to want to buy this card or this card or this card. You know, there's the, the waifu factor of your lightnings and your tifas and your aeriths and your... Uh, and your Shantatos. That's probably just me. Uh, but yeah, you know, there's the there's the, the appeal to um apologies there, my uh, the little notification going off. But yeah, there's appeal to you know the characters of Final Fantasy much much more than the playability in, in some of the older cards. So yeah, I just wanted to, you know, just touch on this a little bit because you know the values of these cards now. There's a there's a guy in the USA, and he was he was openly trying to buy these for twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars. Then he was paying fifty dollars. He got an open buy list on him. He you know he was buying as many copies as he could get of this particular card for you know starting at twenty and then going up to like fifty dollars until he pretty much had his fill. Um, I think if you offered him more, uh, he'll buy them. But uh, yeah, and then you know clouds. You know this is a probably a in play terms or in in deck terms, it's a, a one pound card at best. But you know, it, it's is twenty dollars. 
cloud uh, zakia is 15 dollars tifa wow well yeah she's she's really uh, really creeping up in price you know uh, some of this will be on the fact of on the back of the ff7r of course um but then some of it's on the back of the fact that a lot of people are sat at home right now because of uh, covid um you know and there's there's some people who have got money to spend and they like final fantasy they like lightning they like cloud and they're not afraid to spend the money and it's a you know it's a self-fulfilling prophecy when you get a few people or a bunch of people all after the you know the same thing and then um then we get this uh this spike and boom which we're you know we're certainly in that right now so there's this this cards like these here you know you've got the this is wave two um cloud but it's in, in japanese and it's a card that i sought out you know and i wanted to get a, a copy of it i think i have two copies of this one now in japanese um you know so i'm very happy about that but this is a card that you know people are paying 100 150 pounds for you know quite openly um and you know i can't see that going down anytime soon i, I think I really think that the value that a card like this has, with it being Cloud, Cloud is the biggest name in the, you know, probably in the Final Fantasy world. And, uh, you know, it's it's an iconic, it's the first legend of him from the first set. You know, it's uh, it's just a big card. It's, it's, it's never going to lose that desirability, you know, and anyone who says otherwise is, you know, is, uh, I think, a little bit ill-informed. On, on how stuff works now obviously you run the risk of fftcg dying and yeah that's going to be a uh, a big problem for a lot of people's collections now i don't think that opus one and we'll get to wave one in a minute but i don't think that opus one and some of the bigger promos the rarer promos are going to be affected by that too much because you can't underestimate how many Final Fantasy fans there are. I've learned so much just through being on Instagram and seeing how many people have got insane Final Fantasy collections who don't even know about this card game. They don't know about it. And if they start to to learn about it, you know, at a, at a faster rate, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take much at all. It only takes a handful of new people to come into the FFTCG environment to you know to to make the value of these cards here grow even more which you know i'm not saying that we want the growth to go crazy we don't we don't want to you know i don't think we'd ever want like a pokemon type boom because it can probably be quite harmful for the game now the beauty of opus one is it's not like magic the gathering where you've got the power nine which are very strong cards in play Opus One has very little use in play at all. There's there's not a huge amount of cards that um, that are game warping or uh, you know give you such a you know a, a meta advantage in Opus One at all. It's you know it's not going to affect your playability if you can't get a you know a Japanese foil cloud. Now you can pick up a non-foil English version of this card for. For pounds uh, you know three pounds you can pick up a, an English copy for so and that will be the same for almost every card in Opus 1 bar uh, Shantato that's the only card that really holds a you know a decent value and again it's only 15 pound when you I mean I, I you know I, I don't mean to say that quite dismissively yes it's 15 pound but it's not like you know it, it's not even like a, a Gabranth from Opus 9 that you know that's a very strong card but it's a meta card it's only strong because it's you know it's a meta card. Shantato is probably always going to have a little bit of a place in in the game because of what she does. Oh, there is Amaratsu, but yeah. So uh, you know, so I, I think the Opus One, the big cards from Opus One are, are going to be safe. Um, and then also you you know you, these these are Wave One now. So obviously the first printing of Opus One, they had some some arrows on the cards you have the cloud here uh, the squall sorry here and he's got his blade going across the shadow's throat which you know in japanese culture i think it is that it's uh, regarded pretty bad luck so um you know when they did the 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 
the second print run of Opus One, they changed a few things. Then also you'll notice here on the cloud, I don't know if you can see what the, the colons are very, very low. They're, you know, they're aligned to the bottom of the line, bottom of the text line. That's a, a telltale sign of, of where you've gone as well. And then also there is the, the foiling, which let's see if we can, you should be able to see it there. When you roll it in the light, the foiling reflects differently at different angles. So uh, yeah, this obviously being the wave two, the mass printed set, uh, and then this being the wave one. So you can just see uh, it, it foils slightly differently. So <clears throat> wave one being the first edition as such, you know, or the alpha, beta, um, first edition, if it's Pokemon terms. Again, you know, you can't dismiss the fact that when Final Fantasy collectors are wanting to, um, to fill their collections, you know, a lot of Final Fantasy players, they're completionists. They have to make sure that they have everything done 100%. If you've played the game, you know what it's like. You have to get all the items. You have to kill all the bosses. Uh, it, it drives you mad. But that's that's how it is. That's that's what it is. And when it comes to collecting, you can't you can't dismiss this uh, this completionist mentality because it really is what drives up the the value of these of these rarer pieces and these harder to find pieces now i was very lucky i got into into final fantasy at about opus 5 um but because i'm quite obsessive and i've got a very addictive personality when it comes to doing stuff i i you know i managed to to fill in um a lot of my blanks on these cards you know quite quickly and I bought quite a bit. I, I, you know, I got quite well ahead of the uh, of the curve, maybe for for these cards. But I've not paid anything like, and I, you know, I've, I've got some quite recently. But you know, I've had to slow down quite a lot now because it's just getting probably a little bit beyond my budget. Now, a card like this here, Cloud, it, it's probably going for like a thousand dollars. Yeah, so you know, you, you're talking like a thousand dollars for this card now. I can't go throwing a thousand dollars down at cards, and I, I don't imagine a lot of people can, but there are people who can, and you know, they're happy to pay it um, because you know it's the it's the characters and it's the cards they want. So my my big thing with um, with putting money into uh, into Final Fantasy perhaps is that you need to make sure you put the money into the right cards. Meta cards are not going to hold a long-term value. I have foil walls. I have foil seven CP Sethroths. I have foil for Sawyers. And sooner or later, a card gets printed that makes that card no good anymore. And when that happens, that card is then semi-useless. Uh, it's not entirely useless, but it's, it's semi-useless. And then, you know, it's, uh, it's sad times for all involved. Because, you know, Foil Wall was commanding, what, $60, $70 at one time? Uh, I'm in the UK, so in pounds terms, I think it was I think it was £45 at one point. Now, you, you struggle to sell one for £20. So, you know, it's, it's over half in value. So, you know, if, you, if you're wanting to, to put some money into Final Fantasy and then, uh, you know, to, to watch it... Um, and see how it does and and see if there's some gains to be made then the cards that i would recommend going into are definitely opus one and if you can wave one um so uh yeah you know they're they're the they're the biggest the safest the safest bets in my eyes then the other cards are probably the the rarer promos so here we have a a001 in english now i only have one copy of this a lot of people have many 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 copies but um, I have one copy. This was this has been given out at events before I started playing the game. It's an absolutely free card. It was given to people just for turning up. You know, this is this is now two hundred pounds. So, you know, how much will it be next year? I don't know. It was it was ten pound two years ago, um, and it's you know it's two hundred pound now. You know. 
I just don't know where it's going to go, but so far it's only gone up. Um, then we've got the uh, the A004 here. So this essentially is a Japanese and an English version of this. This is the Japanese version. Um, this was given out at the Dissidia event in Japan, which is it's very similar to this card here, but this was given out at the fourth anniversary. So this was about a year ago now. And it's only been given out at two events so far this year. We're still in 2020, just. What a terrible year it's been. But um, yeah, I think it was given out in France at a Crystal Cup. And then it was given out at a, uh, a fan event in the USA uh, around the start of the year with the Zach promos as well. Again, it's commanded a very, you know, a very good price. It's, it's sort of like... Three hundred pound on the open market, and you know it's it's held that price for the last year. So I can't see a card like this really dropping down anytime soon. Finally, <clears throat> this is the last card that I'll look through today. I mean, if you uh, if you've got any more requests or uh, anything that you want me to talk about different cards, but this is probably the most most sought after card in in the Final Fantasy game. It was given out at the third anniversary um, Dissidia event in Japan um, and no one knew what, what this was. No one knew what a promotional card was for FFTCG. No one cared because it was a Dissidia event, not an FFTCG event. So a lot of the copies were discarded and just you know thrown away like, like the trash promotional product it is really in the, in the wrong event. Um, so... To find one of these in in pretty good condition, um, you know, it's talking. The last one that was sold on on the marketplace was was five thousand pounds. Yeah, I think it was five thousand um, pounds, and it was it was in very good condition. This one is in almost perfect. There's you won't be able to see it. I don't think too well, but there's a little chip down here in the bottom corner, so it's not mint. It might get an eight and a half and nine out of 10 uh, if it was to be graded so you know this this here is definitely a, a card that is worth putting money into in my opinion uh, if you if you can find one uh, a lot of people have been trying to find one for a little while now and it, it is proving quite difficult um, just because of how scarce this card is now um, so I'm very lucky to have one of them so anyway, that being said, what I thought we could do is open a box of Opus One. So this is out of print now. It's not been looked at for, uh, not been print, not been in stock really, should I say, for about a year. And the prices have um, have uh, they've held very solidly for the last a year. But then in the last probably four or five months, the prices have gone up quite dramatically. And they've sort of like been holding around about the £250 mark. So I'm, uh, I'm presuming this is just going to be... It's a bit damaged, this box, which is why I chose to do this. Um, I'm presuming this is going to be just a regular Opus One box. It'd be very unfortunate slash fortunate for the video if it turned out to be Wave One. But looking at the box and the, the few signs that I know of, it doesn't look like it is Wave 1. So we'll jump into some packs and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can profit at £250. So that's not what I paid for the box, um, but we'll have a look see what we get. Obviously the big hits have probably gone through, like uh, are things like Cloud, um, Shantotto. Um, any of the big Final Fantasy 7 characters. Okay, we've got a Vincent Rare to start off with. I'm not going to go through all the jank, just because um, there's not really much point. We probably all know what's in there. But we'll, we'll pull out the foils and, and have a look at the Legends and see what we can get. So yeah, the cards that we're looking for are things like Cloud and Squall, um, Sephiroth, Shantotos, any of the big Legends, Lightning. Hey, first legend, it's foil, it's Golbez. Foil Chaos is now a, a pretty good card to have. So, so far we're 
leave you at £13. OK, we've got a Una. I was going to put £5 onto our, uh, onto our total. Oops. Wish I knew uh, how to stack cards nowadays. So... Uh, Devout, it's a nice card that, uh, that sees a little bit of play. And then we've got another Legend there, a non-foil Jacked. Not an overly expensive card, but... Oh, wow. Well, that helps paying for the box. There we have the Foil Cloud Legend. That there is probably a hundred, hundred and twenty pounds straight away. That's nice. Can it be a double legend pack? No, it's a Cecil. Never mind. So what we need now is the. Oh, and now we've got the foil Cecil. And the Minwoo. If we could get a Shantato, a foil Shantato, and a foil Sephiroth, that would be the dream pack. Or if, uh, maybe a foil lightning could swing it for us as well. Foil lightning 142, the the rare lightning, not the legend, is probably the most desirable of the leg of the lightnings, even though it's uh, it's not the, the not the legend. What we've got here a dancer and a terror for the hero. So we're on two foil legends, one non-foil legend. We've got Hades. Oh, tied us for the non foil. So far, with the cloud, it's uh, it's a very, very good box. Uh, Red Mage and a Riku. So, but um, I have a, a few other boxes of uh, different Opus sets lying around. I've got the, the non foil lightning there, look, in the Ricard. So if uh, if you have any requests or um, if you want to see any more box openings, I'm uh, I'm happy to do some more. Um, and we can see what uh, what other stuff we can pull out. Vanille, one of my favourite cards from the set, and a Gordon. See, in, in the the wave one version of. Vanille is uh, is getting increasingly hard to, to get hold of now. It's becoming a very chase card. Not very much like Nora. Orlando's terrible. I don't think that's ever seen play. Viking, one CP, too little and not enough effect. That Viking won't make... Uh, oh! Wow, a year ago that card would have been fantastic. Now, not so much. And the non-foil Golbez. I will be playing two CP forwards forever. Oh, Wacker Starter. And the Emperor. That's the first starter, I think. You normally get... Oh, oh, no, you must get five. You should get five foil starter. Oh, no, two there. Valifor, sorry. My bad. You should get... Yeah, five foil starters in uh, in every box to make six boxes makes the 30 starters. Well, made a mess of this one. Okay. I've opened packs before, I promise. Chocobo, terrible. Kafka, not so good. Okay, we're over halfway through this box now and uh, I think we've hit the gas and we're now on the brakes. Wacker, Joseph. Um, try and blast through these packs as quick as we can. What's that an effort? Oh, non foil cloud. Okay. Still a little bit of spice left to go. What are we on now? We should have, I think we should have three foil legends and then maybe six or uh, seven non foils. So we've got the, the knight and the guy. And this is two thirds of the way through the pack now. Okay, we have Magus and Bart. Last stack. Let's see if we can get that Shantato. Nope. That's a Kumari. And a Garland. Another terrible card. 
That is my favourite character. And her counterpart. Furion, really terrible. Cosmos. To be fair, I, I say terrible. Some of the cards we're hitting here, they're actually uh, they're actually very very good cards in their own sense. Um, you just you know we have to remember that uh, the Opus one isn't the strongest set. Tidus starter, that's a nice card. And Cloud of Darkness, that's a very nice card to pull. And then we have the Evoker, Lightning for the non foil legend. It's five and one. I think we're definitely short on foil legends. Deleter, Prish, another non foil. Come on, two more foil legends, that'll do. No, let's have a Band Riku instead. Well, we've got the best foil legend. I've oh, got the gold best, my bad. Oh, there we go, we've got the pressure as well. Okay, that's three foils. Got the extra there for the hero. Three packs. If we did another foil, that'd be amazing. Lightning. Oh! Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Did me pretty well in the end there. I was dismissing the box. That's four foils and six non-foils. I only hit four and another non-foil. Wow, okay. This box is fire. This box is absolute fire. Yuffie and Kuja. Okay, so we'll have a, a little recap here, see where we are. Um, so we've got the Golbez, that's a foil legend, it's £15, so I'll say 135 for that. Lightning, a foil legend, £35, that calls it 170 Prish, a foil legend, £15, that's 185 then we'll pull out the spicier things here. Valley 4, 185. That's going to make us to 200, quite comfortably, I would have said. Um, and then, okay, we've got the starters. We have Wacker. We have uh, Valley 4. Then we had Tidus. Geomancer, Seymour, Cecil, Devout. Okay, so in the five spiciest cards we pulled, so we've got the four legends and the Valipor, we've we've easily hit 190, 195 there. Um and you know if the rest of this here, um a lot of these a lot of these commons are a pound, two pound, then you've got Vanille on sort of fiver, Seymour's on fiver, Yuna's here on a tenner, Vincent on five, Riku here on five. <sighs> Lulu, Wacker, and then the starters here, and then these lightnings. You know, you got your cloud here, five, and then uh, it's hard. It's hard. To, I don't quite follow, but I'm going to say we've we've comfortably hit two hundred and fifty pound. I'm quite happy at that. That seems pretty good. Anyway, guys, that's been uh, the video for tonight. We've uh, it's long enough, and uh, thank you very much for watching.